So, this is the final installment of the duplexers here. We have these uh, set up. And it's sitting on the Quantar repeater, which has been integrated with the controller. And uh, I think you can see it's currently keyed up there. Everything's good, and that light should be flashing. And I've built a little control box that uh, allows me to disable the PTT and enable it. Disable. Oop. Enable. There we go. So I'll show this part here. Let me uh, put this up here on the boom. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a, what's called a Sinead test. And we're going to go to the receive frequency. 705. Now, I have this going through a 40 dB attenuator coming out of here. I'm going to flip it to generate. Generate a tone here. And so whatever this is, 42 dBm, you have to subtract 40 dB from it. So we're hitting it with a negative 80 signal right now, which is like perfect. So, let's see, negative 60, so this is going to be 102.9, 70, it's going to be 112, and at this point, we're going to be right around the noise floor, uh, or the 12 dB sinead point. It's going to be very close, and it's going to vary quite a bit there as well. And it, where I'm at, it's typical to have a little bit of variation. There's nothing we can really do about it. You can see right as I get on the cusp, it's going to be right around here. So this is about the 12 dB point, plus or minus a dB, which is all my resolution can do on my test equipment here. You can probably hear a little bit of that coming through in the background. It is kind of loud. So you can see we're, we're basically right around 12 or plus minus. It's just wherever we are. There's really not much we can do about it. And you know, as I move around the room, various things happen. You know, we we kind of approximate that. So this is negative 83 dBm minus 40 is going to be negative 123. And since this is going through the duplexer right now, I should be able to throw a tone in or excuse me, activate the transmitter and not see any real degradation. So I have the transmitter on right now and it's normal to see it bounce around a bit. And you can see we're still doing about the same level of bouncing. We might have gone down about a half dB or so, if anything. And again, it's very hard to measure down here accurately, uh, at least with my test equipment that I have. I found it to be reasonable, so. Yeah, that's obviously a ground issue somewhere here. This isn't professionally installed yet. So that's about where we're at. So that's not too bad sensitivity-wise. Um, we could actually probably run a preamp with this as well um, if we had a, a true pre-selector cavity on here rather than just a, a pass filter. Uh, because this does have a built-in pre-selector, but we shifted the pre-selector to um, be centered over the amateur band. So being where a 147.705 receive, 147.105 transmit, it's probably not the best thing, um, at, least, at least for that. So uh, I'm going to throw this uh, back to monitor here, and uh, we'll transmit again here. What you're seeing when it goes into transmit is it is going to transmit the PL tone. So let's see. Let's get a little better resolution there. So 11.1 dBm input power, 11.0. Plus 40 is 51 dBm, so we're not even losing that much through the duplexers. Um, first duplexer isn't even warm to the touch. 
There's a little bit of power you can feel running through the cable. That's really about it. And you can see we're spot on. So this Quantar uh, is pretty much ready to go. The controller's been programmed and integrated. Uh, we're actually powering it off of the... Um, uh, the repeater uh, itself because it has uh, aux 12 volts available or well, it's it's 14 volts Let me move this around. And I'll show you Kind of what we're doing here Whoop. So that is our interface box that's been built that's very similar to the ones that I use for the um, quad PCI radio so that's, um, ooh, wow, touch it, get a little bit of feedback there. So anyways, uh, this is middle position, transmit, disable. It's supposed to sit like this. Repeater under the control of the uh, controller. And then this is transmit on. Okay, let's move this around once more. And uh, here's our Quantar. You can see the load in there, and there's actually a load behind that as well. Uh, I can probably go around this way and show it off a little bit. And you can see the load possibly behind there. So that's a little... Ooh, that's getting warm. That's a uh, 30 dB and a 10 dB, and then that goes into the signal generator there. Let me get some more light in here. So that is our setup for this. And uh, we've tuned everything up. The duplexers are rebuilt. Um, I'm going to get some different interconnect cable, but we're, we're good. We're negative 123 dBm for 12 dB a sign add with the transmitter running through the duplexers. Um, considering we have 1.5 dB a loss in the uh, uh, pre selector, we got another dB in here. We're, we're about where we can be. We're about as sensitive as we're going to get in this particular system. Um, you know, preamp probably wouldn't make much difference in my opinion, but uh, especially at the site we're going to. So that is the, uh, that's the setup. And uh, anyways, uh, this is uh, Brian Fields, uh, Amateur Radio Call Sign W9CR, showing the uh, TARC, Tampa Amateur Radio Club, uh, new two meter repeater. And, uh, See if I can move it around a little bit here. It does look pretty nice from the front. I have some small, I gotta move this around and we'll figure it out for rack mounting, but uh, it's got a cat controller in there as well, which uh, I did not really enjoy interfacing, but uh, you know, it's what the club wants to run. Anyways, see you guys later. This is uh, Brian, uh, amateur radio call sign, W9CR73s.